Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, everyone's awake. Yeah. So this is a this is a topic which is quite close to our panel's heart. Uh, I would say, inside out versus outside in. When we call, particularly in the context of human development, we are because there can be a lot of connotations of inside out versus outside in. We want to stick to what we mean from human development point of view. Uh, and here, inside out, let me clarify the way we are interpreting it as a panel is that, you know, before I even go there, I just want to say that after all, we are human beings and not human doings, right? So if we are calling ourselves human beings, why do we call ourselves human beings? Any one person. Why are we called even human beings? Anybody, just take a while, guys. There's no right or wrong answer here. Energy. Our energy, our inner energy, and, and energy is meant to be expressed, shared, used. So yes, it is to be ourselves. Now, being our core self and celebrating that, expressing that is what makes us happy. Inside out approach is when we can really harness on people's strengths, their values, their passion, and get it out. And as coaches, you know, we do that all the time. Outside in, which is again very important, is hum for human development, when you're really going in there, and I don't want to take away too much because panelists will talk a lot about it, outside in is a different approach from here. I'll just leave it at that right now. So this panel is going to have some fun with you exploring the inside out, the outside in, and rich experience that they bring in both the modalities, and let's see. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to invite those. Can all our panelists please walk up the stage and we get one minute each to introduce ourselves. Meanwhile, as I would have, uh, okay, so uh, can I first call upon uh, Sudeep Verma, please? Sudeep Verma is the Chief Enabler and Managing Director of Vegan World. Huge round of applause, please. Everybody needs energy here. Then we have Shalini Tiwari, Director, JMB Dynamic Solutions. I'd like to call upon Dr. Vivek Trivedi, Founder and CEO, Shikshaji.com. And uh, uh, my dear friend Abhijit Bhattacharya, Global Career Coach, SNP Global. Please. Yeah, so just a minute if you want to say something, particularly in the context, 30 seconds each, if you want to say something about yourself that is not mentioned here. Abhijit, we start with you. Yeah, nothing in particular, but uh, being in the leadership development and coaching space for around 15 years uh, across you know, various industries. Uh, and I'm a PCC certified coach by the ICF and did my coaching education from the Columbia University in New York. Uh, that's a little bit about me. Hi, so myself, Dr. Vivek Trivedi, I come from 25 years of experience in HR. I was head of HR with a uh, uh, few Fortune 500 companies uh, like uh, JSW Group, GMR Group. And uh, last three years, I started my own by the name called Sikshakji.com. And uh, whereas we are in uh, the business of supporting MSME business owners, how to take the business vision forward. And uh, that's how uh, quite, uh, you know, helpful and uh, quite supportive in the nature in terms of taking the vision forward. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Puneet Perotra. I wish to be called a human enabler uh, with now 25 years experience, years of experience in the corporate world. Spent about 18 years as, as corporate leadership roles. My last role was that of a head of business, All India for Novartis. Last seven years, totally dedicated to, the, to coaching, enabling, and uh, facilitation. Thank you, Puneet. Hello. A uh, very good afternoon to all the wonderful people sitting here. Nobody's wonderful. <laughs> yes. So I'm Shalini Tiwari, and um, I carry with myself around 22.5 years of experience, a uh, core healthcare HR professional, having worked with major healthcare giants in the Mumbai circuit, which includes Leelawati Hospital, Jaslok, uh, Fortis Group of Hospitals, Global Hospitals, and many others. My uh, last assignment was with White Lotus International Hospital and Research Center as Vice President and Group Head HR. And uh, now uh, I have become happy as mentioned by one of my colleagues in his presentation. So I've launched my company, which is uh, JMB Dynamic Solution. I'm the founder director, and we are into uh, the complete HR outsourcing function, TND, quality accreditation, and many others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shalini. Uh, I'd just like to say I'm a curious conversationist. 
and pretty curious to hear from my panelists and hopefully a meaningful conversation with all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sudeep. So we'll start with this uh, very word, inside out. And uh, I have the pleasure, Abhijit, if you could please throw some light on what do you mean by, what does it mean to you, rather? Inside out. A little bit, if you could share what is the relevance of this approach to you and possibly what are the limitations as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Puneet. So I think any development in intervention that is introduced in any organization or in any sphere is to create a positive change in human beings, right? But we all know, and uh, this has also been the intentional change theory that Richard Boyatzis talk about, that human beings do not change when they're told to change. They change when they want to change and in their own terms. And so that is where what you know, we have started noticing is that instruction doesn't work so much, rather extraction works. So what is inside, if we can bring it to the outside and make people aware of it, then they can, you know, exercise their autonomy and, you know, they can exercise uh, the liberty as to how they go about it. And so case in point, uh, in our organization, what happened uh, some time back is, and this was happening across the industry in many organizations, uh, organizations were telling their people that you own your career. So which means that you, know, you are the master of it and you have the autonomy to give the direction that you want. So extraction uh, is, you know, very important there because instruction doesn't work. There's no one size fits all sort of an approach. And so that is where, you know, we tried coaching with people as to, you know, what their goals are, what their aspirations are, what, how they want to craft it and, you know, how they see the challenges and the roadblocks around that. And so it's a very safe and a non-judgmental space. And that is where, you know, people truly start, you know, speaking about, you know, what they want. Uh, and, you know, they're able to create that vision for themselves. And as they do it, then of course, you know, with some sort of support, they gather the motivation and the accountability to take actions to move in that direction. So that's an example that I thought you know, I'd share. So unconditional positive regard, safe space, reminds me so much of the great Carl Rogers. You know, and if you've heard about Carl Rogers, please read more about the humanitarian approach. I think uh, when he says so beautifully that when we look at the sunset, we never question why the sunset there's a little more yellow in that corner or orange on that side of the corner. We never question sunrises and sunset. Anything that nature gives us, we are in awe and we celebrate. When, when, when it comes to human beings, we have a lot of issues. We want to look at the dark side, we want to look at the derailers, we want to look at developmental areas, and that probably doesn't always work. And inside out, therefore, works so brilliantly. Thank you, Abhijit, for a lot of... Uh, uh, I would definitely like to call upon now... Um, uh, Vivek, would you want to share a little more about inside out yeah i think uh, that that's a pretty right statement when we talk about inside out uh, you know because everyone wants an elevation and on top of it they want to be supplemented and complemented with respect to their experience and expertise and that's how like you know this inside out uh, things work very well however like you know just want to give you one another perspective of outside in as well you know, and as there is a saying in Sanskrit that satsangati kim na karoti punsam, you know. So what does it mean is that, uh, you know, if, if you have got a limitation, if you have got a segmentation, which is done, which is a saturation already done in your organization, definitely you have to look forward to have an outside in approach. Like, you know, let me give an example of a cyber security. That when, when it comes to a cyber security training, probably you may have to have some expert getting into your organization who can give you the perspective of what's happening all across. And then this can be quite comfortable for you to adopt the best technology. And that's how this uh, works pretty well. I mean, just a thought on outside sure. in. Yeah, please. Well said. So it's another perspective to look at outside in, where an organization seeks information, seeks expertise externally to actually help people inside grow and learn. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vivek. Yes, Shalini, would you want to share something about outside in a little more? So uh, whether it's outside in or inside out, these two are completely opposite strategies. At the same time, both are very relevant. So when uh, any business, you know, we see a, a business and the talent development. So I remember one line, which is innovate or evaporate. So either you have to innovate or soon you will vanish because time uh, technology and various other things are changing at a blink of an eye. Now, about the organization, 
I will, I would want to share a small, uh, you know, instance wherein we actually implemented this. This is an organization which has many vertical, one is education sector, one hotels, one hospitals, and uh, cricket training academy. So various verticals were there, and we tried to evaluate the core team, and we saw their profiles, and we came to know that all are wonderful, you know, uh, professionals in their respective fields. However, when it comes to the leadership, none of them were. So, uh, a, a decision was taken, we evaluated them, because obviously any organization would want leaders to take it forward, and updated leader, which are relevant to the times. So, an excellent initiative was uh, started, which was uh, mentor and prodigy. So, in this, we identified uh, the vice presidents of different verticals, and each of them were given two to, you know, uh, the prodigies who were the head of business development, head of marketing, head of uh, other uh, faculties. And then we have run this program successfully. So this is kind of, you know, outside in. So though different verticals, however, we are trying to bring in the talent from outside to in. And immediately, because see, not only training will do, or coaching or mentoring will do, obviously everybody would want a motivation. And what is there in that for me? Right? You do training, but what is there in that for me? So uh, they were uh, given the clear career path that this is there for them in that. So now this brings in the loyalty with the organization and happy employees. Thank you. The same inside out or outside in as you wish to explore further. So personally, I don't lean either of the sides. So I'm playing it safe. Uh, but I'll uh, take the liberty of using an analogy. Uh, and it's a real case. Uh, it's an drawing from Shalini's example. I'll take sports. Uh, uh, American Institute, where they're coaching uh, high potential athletes they're being coached and they have a sports coach and a mental coach. And they are being trained for athletes and the athletes are being trained for running 110 meter hurdles. Now, when we run that race, you know, our goal is obviously to run and win. And one, if one were to ask that what will, what will help you win, right? Most of the folks will tell who jumps the hurdles best. And we tend to focus on that. And the sport coach actually teaches you how best to jump. But uh, when they went and asked the guy who really won, and they looked at the statistics between the difference between the guys who are really, you know, meeting the mark and not, it was not how best they were jumping the hurdle. The biggest difference was how best they were running between the hurdles. And the mental coach was asking him, how can you run faster between the hurdles? I'm just using an example that it's, the way I see outside in and inside out is one more in terms of telling what to do or prompting what should be done. And uh, inside out is give that space to explore what more you can do. Very well said. I think our panelists, I think you've nailed it by saying this. One is trusting from the outside, suggesting from the outside, being a prescriptive approach by telling what to do or even heavily suggesting what to do is outside in. Whereas inside out is when you're really inspiring, when you're co-creating, when you're extracting, and, and it is like, I want to build my, not, Taj, not your Taj Mahal, but I want to build my Tar, is all about inside out. So coaching, as all of you, uh, us here have been associated with coaching in various capacities, many in the audience, coaching is, the, is one of the most, most uh, probably the most transformational approach to inside out uh, process that we were talking about here. Outside in would be, let's say, mentoring, let's say, facilitation, workshops, learning sessions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Both have their place. By no means are we trying to suggest here that one is more superior as compared to the other. So I'd like to ask my panelists, and probably even I'd like to mention a little bit here, what is your approach, especially when you design learning journeys, and when you design learning programs or development programs, how do you look at this inside out versus outside in what are the considerations to choose your approach? Yeah, thank you, Puneet. And I'm just taking the opportunity here. And sure. I wanted to quickly build on, you know, what Sudeep just said. 
So the goal in that sort of an example is very simple. Everyone wants to win. But what they want to take away is a victory. And the connotation of that victory in everyone's mind is different. And that is, you know, the balance between the instruction and the extraction that, of course, you know, there is a preset agenda that you got to win. But what do you want to take away as victory? What is victory to you? And then how do you then work towards that victory? So I think, you know, that sort of analogy also works for any learning and development program where there are, you know, certain learning goals that, you know, the program would want to or the journey would want to achieve. But what is the takeaway for each individual? Because that is very, very personal in nature. So how do we facilitate that? And because that will also determine the transfer of learning into the workplace. Because you can, you know, have your goal met but have nothing transferred. And that's what, you know, also research is showing. So I think that is the balance that I would, you know, kind of really look for. Like, Love are the goals met? But what are the individual takeaways for people? Very well said, Abhijit. In fact, that reminds me uh, of a Venn diagram. Remember, we used to study Venn diagram in mathematics. Yeah. A union B. It could even be seen as A union B union C, where A are the, is the interest of the candidate who wants to be developed, B is the interest of the business unit, and C could be the organizational interest. Even take it to the society's interest. But there has to be a Venn diagram where we have to maximize A union B. If it is all about the organization's interest and the individual, it's not at all inside out and it's bound to fail at some point in time. So thank you for highlighting that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Your take on <clears throat> what should be the approach of this balance to inside, if, whether a balance is required at all or not. What are the considerations to design a program when you have to mix inside out with outside in? Yeah, I think uh, that that's a very fair question and moreover, like you know, if you need to build upon, I hope that's fine. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is it better? Yeah. So, so basically, when we talk about the the outcome, probably this we always wanted to connect with the business strategies, you know, because that's at the end of the day, it's all the business which requires you, and whether you take any approach for that matter, the outcome is most important. And when we talk about an outcome, I'll just take a few pointers here that uh, you know, when we want to build up a business strategy, there are certain factors which comes in picture, like you know how I can improve the quality, what can be customer satisfaction, how the customer satisfaction can move from level A to level B and what can be the delta and how the delta can be built upon. Then what can be the deliverables, like you know the time part of it, cost optimization. So these are the various factors which comes out and that becomes quite an imperative for anyone, you know, to, to just uh, get the best practices. And for that matter, there's a hybrid approach which comes out, like, you know, and this is something what we have done in, uh, in, uh, in JSW as a group there, that we didn't hypot, uh, you know, I mean, all of you are coaches, so you understand that hypot performance. So I'm not going detail there, but that's what quite helpful. And uh, just taking an example further to LNT, AM Nayak, you know, they, they explored something called as reverse mentoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this reverse mentoring went very well when even like, you know, the youngsters who are coming and the, the graduates or a management trainees, they were actually like, you know, mentoring even the senior people. So that's what a very different approach. Yeah. So I just want to add on this Fantastic. Point. In yeah. fact, uh, reverse mentoring, as you mentioned, is I think is becoming very important. Now with five generations in the workplace, there's a lot of need for Gen Z and, uh, and you know, to really go back and mentor the other people and people to be more open, curious and flexible to actually learn from Gen Z and likewise. So thank you for highlighting. Thank so you. what's your take on uh, the inside out versus out, outside in? What are the considerations that should be taken into account when you devise a, or design a journey? Yeah, so one is, uh, you know, proactive approach. Other one is a respond to the market requirements. So when we uh, talk about, you know, again, I'll come with a very small example. Uh, everybody knows Chroma. I'm just taking a name. So under this brand, we get, uh, you know, electrical, uh, electronic items of all the brands. However, what about, you know, uh, a organization? Now, uh, suppose uh, I'm just changing it. So uh, suppose if I buy a, a product from them, and what happens to the after sale service? Again, I have to myself do everything. So if there is some organization which can provide the customer support of all the brands under one roof, 
Will this create a wow in the customers or the market? This will resolve all your hassle. So likewise, in a business environment, if you could create a wow, it is not one versus the other. It could be a perfect blend. Depending on your situation and the requirement and the age of your organization. Thank you. Thoughts on the blend of inside out versus outside in uh, from a human development. So, can I take it? so I'll probably narrate an example and hopefully that answer will give the answer to the audience. So, at COVID time, my daughter was having her online schooling, and suddenly the teacher said that, hey, there's a quiz. And my daughter got very excited. Hey, Papa, Papa, you don't say anything. Huh? I want to win. And uh, I also, because it's COVID time, I could see. So what the teacher does is they display geometric shapes onto the screen. And it was a cuboid, a rectangle, a cone, and a cylinder. And my mind went ahead. Because I remember when I was in school, what was the typical question being asked? What is the shape's name? which is the big, you know, largest volume, uh, which, what is the area. And I, I assumed or presumed that that will be the question which will be asked, right? But you know, the teacher didn't ask that question. When they showed that shape, the question she asked is, which shape can you roll? Which can you stack? Which can you uh, slide? And I, I, you know, it, was a, it really hit me. I think telling what is the shape, what is an area, is what I call it as outside in. And you have to ask yourself, what question will you ask your daughter or your son? Uh, one last bit that I want to share in my own practice as a coach and a facilitator, or even designing learning journeys with HR professionals. I think uh, ASK grid is what I keep in my mind. Am I going to work on the attitude, behavior, mindset? Am I working on the skill here? hard or soft skill, or am I working on the knowledge area, domain knowledge, or any specific subject knowledge? If you're working on attitude, behavior, mindset, an inside-out approach is the best approach because you really need to go into discovery, and that person has to accept changes that need to be made, but first of all, know their strengths. Remember, any developmental uh, initiative cannot happen unless you're leveraging on the strengths of the individual. The areas of development come much later. But any change of attitude, behavior, mindset, it should be an inside-out approach. Any skill or knowledge augmentation outside-in works much better. And usually I use combinations now. So for example, even if, before they can go on a great coaching journey, can they all be on the same page? I'll just give you a small example. If we were to work on people in the VUCA world for change management, some coaching project, do they understand uh, the whole process of VUCA? Do they understand what a uh, human uh, you know, emotional brain is all about? Do they understand this whole hijacking process? Do they understand what happens to human and people when they are under stress? A little bit of knowledge about human psychology, about how humans are, goes a long way in then the acceptance during coaching session. Uh, so a combination of inside out and outside in works brilliantly most of the times. On that note, I really want to thank my esteemed panel. A big round of applause for them, please. <laughs>